Hello everybody, Jimmy is Promo here back again with another awesome video. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about everything that you can expect when you update your Samsung Galaxy device to Android 9.0, which gives you the brand new user interface from Samsung called Samsung One UI. So now with the update being a little bit more widespread, I wanted to show you just a little bit more of what to expect. So as for example, right here on the home page, you can see that there is one tab on the very bottom, but then when I swipe over, you can see all three tabs, which this one right here is the back button, as well as the recents, and then this one is the home. So they did switch over into gestures, which I will go over that here in just a little bit, but I wanted to show you what happens when you have Samsung Pay that is activated and being used as your favorite cards uh, with inside of this brand new update. So as you go to this home page here, this is where you can swipe up your card, you're able to make all your payments, but if you would like to change the way it looks and where you want that little tab to be shown, on the very top right hand side of Samsung Pay, you go to more options and then you can click on settings. And then underneath here, you just go to use favorite cards and then you choose where would you like it to be shown. So if you'd like it to be away from the home screen, which you just saw, you can turn that off. But when you are on your lock screen or when the screen is off, you are able to swipe up, use your credentials as such as your iris or pin or fingerprint. So in this way, you'd be able to make all of your payments. So now when I am back to my home screen, you can see that I'm right back to where I was from before, but we will also talk about these navigation keys here in just a second. Now, if you are brand new here at the channel of Jimmy's promo and you own a Samsung Galaxy device, don't forget to hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications to get notified for future videos. And don't forget about that playlist tab on the very top to check out all the videos I've made so far far for the past devices as well as the playlist for the Samsung One UI. So one of the major changes with this update is the one-handed interaction. And what I mean by that is when we go back to this last screen talking about the software information, you can see the very top of the screen is the visual portion and then the bottom is the interaction. And so let's say we go back to a couple different examples. Inside of your messaging, you're gonna notice that your conversations and your contacts are now listed on the bottom instead of the top. So then this way you don't have to reach all the way to the top just to go to another contact or start a new conversation. So again, the very top is visual, the bottom is going to be your interaction. Same thing with your phone dialer. All of these right here, your keypad, your recents, contacts, places, everything else was actually at the very top, which when you think about it, it really didn't make a lot of sense to make a far reach just to get to the very top. And then you can do and see everything the exact same in terms of even the camera. So a lot of the areas that you would change the most will probably be your shooting mode, going from live focus to photo to video, but all all of these used to be on the very top, uh, but now you have pretty much your Bixby vision and your settings and everything else towards the top. So where you mostly interact with your device will again be pretty much on the bottom for every single application that is on this device. And you can see it again when you go inside of your settings, all of the interaction is towards the bottom with the visual on the top. The next big notable change is going to be the navigation bar. So beforehand you used to have icons for the recents, the home, as well as the back, but the One UI update brings it in for gestures. Now you are able to have it either way you would like. So if you like to change it between the two, if you pull down the notifications panel, you're gonna move over to where it says the navigation or navigation bar. Now this is where you can add in the navigation buttons if you'd like them to still be there. And you can also change the order. So you can have this one set up to where it's set up mostly for either a left-handed or somebody switching from an LG device, or you can have it set up right here for the left-handed folks. So it's really either way you would like. And then this one right here is going to be the full screen gestures. And another nice thing is that this one does give you the gesture hints. So those three little lines or dashes, if you don't want them to be there, you can actually turn it off and it will still act as your home, recents, as well as the back. But if you'd like to have those little hints there for just something to notarize and, and, and check out on the bottom of the screen, you are able to go right back in there and then you can add it back to the very bottom. The third big change is going to be the night mode or dark mode. So this one's going to be one that is heavily used. You can see that mine is actually still on that right now. So you can go through here and you can either have it on and you can also have it off. So if I was to turn this one off, you can see that now my settings is a really bright white. Same thing if I was to go into the phone dialer, this one is going to be white. Same thing with your Samsung messages, again, going to be white. And if you would like to save battery, you want something that's just a little bit easier to use on the eyes. Once you turn that on, it will work with all of these Samsung applications. So Samsung messages, your Samsung phone dialer, and pretty much anything and everything else, even the Samsung internet, will go into a dark theme. Number four on this list is one of my favorite ones. It's called Lift to Wake. So it's actually a motion and a gesture that once you lift up the phone for it to pretty much read your face for the facial recognition, it'll automatically wake up the phone to do that action. 
Beforehand, before this update, I would have to press hard on the home button just to wake the screen for it to look for my face to unlock the device, or I would have to hit on the power button. So this is uh, one of those convenience portions of this update. It's one of those things that's super fast. You're gonna love it as well. Definitely one of the first things to turn on when you get this device, other than the night mode, is lift to wake. So when you actually lift it up, it'll wake up the screen, recognize your face, and unlock your phone. To turn this on, you wanna pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon, and you're gonna scroll down to where it says advanced features. Now inside of advanced features, you'll see in the middle of the screen, it says motions and gestures. You'll click on that option there, and lift to wake is the very first one you're able to toggle on and toggle off. Once you have it toggled on with that little blue light, now you're able to basically lift your phone, it'll brighten up the screen for you, and then use the facial recognition. So before we go any further with all of the different changes, I do wanna show you one change that was not written down on my list over here, and that was the settings menu. You can see here that there was a little bit of an update by putting everything clumped and categorized together. So it makes it just a little bit easier to read and navigate through the settings within Samsung One UI. Number five on the list is device care. If you pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon, you're gonna scroll down to where it says device care. Now this one used to be called device maintenance and this is why I wanted to show it to you because the name has changed, but also on the very top right hand side where there's more options, there's these two options I also want to show you. With the auto optimization, this is where beforehand, if you go down here and it shows maybe the number 70, 80, or 90, and you hit on that optimize button, you can actually have this one do it for you automatically. So on the very top right hand side, if you click on auto optimization, when you have this one turn on, you can have your phone optimize automatically once a day. And so I have mine set up to where it'll be done every single day at 3 a.m. So this way it kind of gives it a little bit of a refresh kick, making sure everything is closed in the background and everything else. The next one I'm gonna show you on the very top is the auto restart. So this is very good for you to do for the health of your device. Um, your phone will only restart if the screen is off the phone isn't being used, and the battery is above 30%. Now I have mine turned on, and I set it to where it'll do it on Monday, as well as Thursday, and this time doing it at 4 a.m. Because every day my battery is already doing that little optimization at 3 a.m. So in this way, twice a week, one hour later, it will automatically restart my phone for me. So then this way I don't have to turn it off myself. Change number six is the new icon. So if you look over here with the Galaxy Note 9 versus the Samsung One UI update on the Galaxy S9 Plus, the phone icon has changed, the text messaging icon has changed, so has the Play Store, as well as the camera icon, and even gallery. So you can see that some of them down here actually don't even have the names of the applications. So there's a little bit of changes with the icons. They're just a little bit more soft, uh, and then also just a little bit more square, round. Um, so you're not really able to change it between having a square icon and then a round icon. They pretty much kind of blended the two together to make these new icons. Number seven on the list is a major change to the recent apps menu. So now when you go inside of your recent application, you're gonna see that your recent apps are gonna be right here. It's almost like a little bit of a hybrid change between the Samsung One UI and then also using GoodLock 2018 with the recent application option there. When you actually go and you tap on these icons of these applications, you can check out the app info. You can open this one up in the split screen view. You can also open it up in a pop-up view so it's just a little floating window or you can lock the application. Now also towards the very bottom is going to be the suggested applications for you to use. Now you'll also notice that if I go to close all, I go back to recents, it will change based on probably what it thinks I might use based on how many times it's been opened. Now also another thing on the very top I do wanna show you inside of the recent apps menu is the more options on the very top. You can click on settings and those suggested applications you can have that one turned off if you would like. So either way, if you want these suggested apps on the bottom or not, you can have it on, you can have it off, and then pretty much your recent apps menu will be quite a bit different, um, and also how you use multi-window. So let's say we go inside of YouTube, and we wanna open this up in the split screen mode. Here's another application I can have open, and then now you're running two apps at the exact same time. 
Next on the list is inside of the keyboard and the different keyboard modes. So let's say we go inside of text messaging. You'll see this little down arrow with the Samsung keyboard and you'll have the option for modes. This is where you can have the standard keyboard. You can have the one handed keyboard for right or left handed, making it really easy for just the one handed operation, as well as the last one, which is the floating keyboard. Now you can move this anywhere and everywhere you would like on the screen and you can still go inside of here and you can get everything typed out and it goes where it's supposed to go. Now you're also able to go inside of modes. Let's say we put it back to standard. Um, you can also change the keyboard size. So if you like your keyboard to be a little bit larger, you can also make it just a little bit smaller. So everybody has different lengths and thicknesses of thumbs and fingers when they type. So it's one of the ways that you can create this phone to work best with you and your hands. Now, some of these features were already a part of the phones in the past, but again, they placed it somewhere just a little bit easier and faster to get to if you need to change the modes. Again, everything with this user interface is it is basically good with your one handed interaction. So this way you don't have to go from screen to screen to screen somewhere on the top or scrolling up and down. The modes is super easy to get to with one thumb. Next on the list will be smart orientation. What I mean by that is if you turn off the auto rotate, now it will not rotate with you if you change your phone from horizontal to portrait mode because maybe you're just making a adjustment on your bed or couch. So this is one of those settings you can simply turn off because maybe let's say you're inside your gallery or watching YouTube or really doing anything else. Um, if you were to bring up your phone like this, normally it would have changed into the horizontal mode. But you will notice that there will be a small little gray circle on the very top. When you tap on that, now it'll actually rotate for you. So then this way you don't have to have it always going every time that you change the orientation of your phone. It'll only do it when you actually give it the authorization to make the change by simply tapping on that gray little circle. Number nine on the list is camera. So they added two little small setting changes inside of the camera, but you might find these to be super helpful. If you scroll down to where it says the category of videos inside of the rear video size, as well as the front video size, you have the option to save them as the high efficiency video. So you can record videos in HEVC format to save space. Now the quality will not go down. It'll look the exact same, but the file size will be literally half of the size. So you can test this just by shooting a video, either by 10 seconds, 20 seconds, you know, shoot it with the setting on, shoot it with the setting off. And you'll notice that the efficiency video looks the exact same, but it is at half of the size. But there will be one thing here that it states is that you may not be able to play the file or the video on other devices or share them online. So if you find yourself not really sharing a ton of videos, a lot of it just stays on your device, definitely turn on that setting. Now, another one that I do love on this one is inside of the camera modes. Inside of the camera mode, you'll see an option here for keep using the last mode. So I kept this on because maybe a lot of times you do a lot of super slow motion videos. And that means that every single time that you open up your camera, it'll go to the very last mode used. Next on the list is the recycle bin or the trash that is inside of your gallery. So if you go through here and let's say that you go inside and you delete a couple images, it'll move it to the trash. Now the nice thing I like about this one is that maybe you did not really want that video or picture to be deleted, or maybe you might delete it and then you want it back maybe a few days later. If you go to the very top for the more options, you'll see this option here for trash. And inside of the trash, it'll let you know that all of the items in the trash will be permanently deleted after 15 days. Now a couple of things that is nice about it, you can select one or multiple images and you can restore them back into your gallery or if you'd like them to be completely deleted, you can select many of them, hit on the delete, and then now they are permanently off of your device. So another small tweak or change they did inside the gallery, which I do love, is that when you do scroll through, you're trying to find something in particular, but when you are on the very top of this little uh, scrollable screen, if you do swipe down one more time, it gives you options on the very top to where you can limit it down to where you're seeing only your videos if there's something that you wanted to find extremely fast, or if you go through some of your pictures and you put a little heart or a little favorite next to them, then you'd be able to find all of your favorited photos. Now to show you how you can favorite a photo, just basically tap on it, put a little heart on there. And then now when you're on the very top over here, if you're trying to find that picture in the future, maybe three months from now, just swipe down, hit on that favorite. And then now you did find that image. Number 11 on this list is reducing some of the animations that your phone does. Now, if you pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon. And when you scroll down to where it says the advanced features, 
One of these options right here is reduce animation. So you can tone down the motion effects on the screen, such as when applications are opened and closed. And it pretty much does the same thing too. If you go through and you take a screenshot, this one will be a little bit either faster or slower, depending on what you do, along with that little animation on the very bottom. So if I go through here, go back to the advanced features, I reduce the animation. Let's say that I go back in, I take a little screenshot, and you can see that it'll change just a little bit, but it's a little bit more uh, visible when you open up applications and you close them, because you won't really see it shrinking down, you just see it closing. And that's pretty much what that reduction of the animation does. Number 12 on this list is dealing with adoptable storage. What I mean by that is let's say we go inside of the settings, you're gonna scroll down where it says device care. And then inside of device care, if you go underneath storage, this is where you can check out your SD card as well as the internal storage. And one of the nice things you are also able to do is checking out the storage analysis. So you can check out how it looks with the internal storage versus the external storage. But really what the adoptable storage does with inside of the Samsung One UI with the Android 9 update is that the, the external storage, the micro SD card, is not really treated as separate. It's created as just a extension of the internal storage. So this way it can read it faster. It's almost as if there is no SD card in there. You just made the internal storage faster, as well as storing applications onto your micro SD card. So then this way for anybody who loves the micro SD card, they love to save space, but they also have a lot of applications. You can move those games and apps to the SD card as if it was part of the internal storage already. Now, the last one that we'll talk about today is going to be dealing with the clock. Now, there's a lot of different things and little widgets you're able to use, but I like it when they add small little changes. So if you go anywhere in your home screen, you press and hold anywhere that's empty, you go to widget. If you scroll through, you'll find the option for clock. Right now, there's only three options. My guess is that they'll probably add more to it. But let's say that we add this digital clock. You can put it anywhere in your screen that's empty. Now, the nice thing is that you can change the background tra transparency if you want it to be black, if you want it to be white. When you go to white, it'll kind of change it from white to gray to dark gray to black. So it's actually pretty nice depending on whatever wallpaper that you're using. So I'll keep mine as black, 100% for the background transparency. And then now you're able to have your clock there. But all I would have to do if I wanted to stay there was hit the back button, but I already have one sitting. Now, if you would like to make a change, press and hold, you can go back inside of your widget settings, and this is where you can make some really fast changes to that little widget. Now, also, if you tap on that one, it'll take you over into your clock and alarms and world clock and stopwatch, everything else. So it's a really fast way to get into, maybe you need to change your timer or alarm, and then, oh, there we go, we have the alarm turned on, and now we can get out of it. So that right there was the majority of everything that has changed when you update your Samsung Galaxy devices to the Samsung One UI, which comes with the Android Pie update. Now, if you guys liked this video, make sure you guys give this thing a huge thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit on subscribe. You can subscribe right over here on the very bottom left-hand side, this little red circle. Share this video with your friends and family and social media sites. And other than that, I'll see you guys later.